I'm delighted to be here. I'm Susanna Street. I'm a former BBC business anchor and now I'm a financial commentator. Just want to tell you about what's happening this morning. We are going to be bringing up experts and analysts here onto the stage, hear presentations and two panels to discuss just how food industry investors can engage with policymakers and try and drive really, really crucial change in the food system. Let me tell you a little bit more about the Food Foundation to start off with. It's a UK charity which aims to change UK food policy and business practice for the better. Its vision is a sustainable food system which delivers health and well-being for all. Following the first ever UN Food System Summit back in the autumn of 2021, the Food Foundation established its UK's Investor Coalition, which is growing pretty well. It boasts of 23 institutional investors and has £6 trillion of assets under management. And I'm pleased to say that some of those investors are here in the room with us today. Let me just set the scene for the discussions and present you with some pretty stark facts, many which you will know, but when you hear them all together, it does take your breath away. The words, world's food system really is in crisis. More than three billion people can't afford a healthy diet. Also, you know, we've had geopolitical shocks intensifying the problems right around the world. The way we produce and distribute our food is contributing exponentially to climate change and the loss of biodiversity. I, went, I was in the Arctic last week in Tromsø in northern Norway, and I was uh, talking to scientists on a stage just like this, just about the impact of climate change, mainly on fish stocks. The ocean acidification is going to cause huge damage to fix fish stocks, to livelihood, uh, but also it is going to not just risk economic growth, but push the planet to environmental collapse. And you hear so many different stories um, last week in Tromsø about the impact on indigenous populations um, and the, just really how people are so concerned about their livelihoods and, of course, uh, the ice melting in the Arctic, which has real repercussions for all of us. But it's not just happening there, it's happening right on our doorstep as well, of course. Uh, when you hear that 10 million people are living with high, high levels of food security, insecurity in this country, not knowing where their next meal is going to come from. And also when you realise that 50% of the living species that did exist before the Industrial Revolution no longer do so. They cannot be found here. So it's clear that we need these discussions more than ever. And there is frustration um, that, you know, although there's growing awareness about the need for our food systems to change, there is much more focus right now on divestment from fossil fuels than there is actually about the need to change our current food systems. So today, what we want to do is really shine the light on what's what we need to happen to raise awareness, but ultimately really ensure that capital is flowing in a way that protects the planet, not destroys it. So we're going to hear from uh, two speakers. I'm very sorry to say that, um, unfortunately, Richard uh, Walker, Managing Director of Iceland, can't join us for personal reasons. However, Stuart Lendrum, who is uh, the Head of Product and Process at Iceland, will be giving his speech and welcome Stuart to be talking to you a little bit later and he'll be delighted to take questions as well. We'll have two panels, uh, but first, uh, to really underline more of the threats that the world is facing right now, I'd like to welcome to uh, the stage Professor Tim Benton, Research Director for Emerging Risks at Chatham House, and he's going to talk about how we may have reached the crisis point of no return. Welcome, Tim. Thank you. Thank you. 